Greetings, my fine feathered friends. I am uh, Stark River Matt, back once again with some more uh, Phoenix Wright. We're on to what, day, th day three now? Day three, yeah, we're up to day three. Anyways, February 24th, 9.41 a.m., District Court Defense, Defendant Hobby, whatever, yeah. Oh, that's a lot of my ears. So what do you think, Mr. Wright? I think the prosecution is confused as we are. After all, the victim was murdered in two different places at the same time. A different suspect was arrested for the other crime scene. Anna. Good morning, Mr. Wright. I apologize for yesterday. I was indisposed. I hope they didn't hold you too long for questioning. We just finished, actually. I'm used to all-nighters, though. So how'd it go? So as Mr. Rice suspects, the police are clueless. I figured as much, so I struck a plea bargain? A plea bargain? What do you mean by that? Do you agree that if I told them the truth behind this simultaneous murder, they wouldn't seek the capital punishment? That's what I mean, Emma. Lana, don't tell me you... Much to my regret, I'm as much in the dark about this as they are. This... in the sky? Huh? We discovered traces left by the certain person in the police department's evidence room. They belong to Officer Jake Marshall. We found Officer Marshall's traces. One state and fingerprints to be exact. That's a trump card I have up my sleeve today. You do understand that this means, don't you? In order to defend my sister, you're going to have to accuse Mr. Marshall. We have to play the cards we're dealt. Isn't that right, Miss Guy? We you have to, Mr. Wright. Uh, 10 o'clock, courtroom number 9. Rubber, rubber. on session for the trial of Miss Lana Sky. Defense is ready, Your Honor. Prosecution is... I'll have to clarify. It takes 30 minutes by car to reach criminal affairs in the prosecutor's office. The victim, Bruce Goodman, was slain at both places at the same time. That's not physically possible, is it? That's where I hear the victim from the evidence room just disappeared. Yes, yeah, so and the body eventually reappeared in the trunk of Mr. Edgeworth's car. Wow, this is one messed up trial. What am I doing as the prosecutor to present impartial evidence? Today we'll present evidence relating to the murder at the police department. In so doing, I believe that the way in which we should proceed will reveal itself. Now that's what I, Mr. Er, sets Mr. Edgeworth apart. He sounds so top of, on top of things, even though he doesn't know what's going on himself. And that's supposed to be an animal, animal trait? An animal trait? Yeah, it's an animal trait. Great, hello, let's let the, tri uh, let the trial resume. On the day of the crime, what exactly transpired at the police department? Mr. Edgeworth, you may call your first witness to the day, the day of the stand. For our first witness, the prosecution calls the suspect in murder that occurred at the police department. The suspect? You mean the so-called murderer? Oh boy. Things are getting wild from the get-go. Ooh, boy! Zooey Mama! But it wouldn't please state his name and occupation. Yes, sir. I'm Officer Mike Me Meekin, sir. Occupation is, um... That would be murderer, sir. Uh, so you're telling us that you're a professional killer? Sir, that was me, er, sir. I'm the one who did it, sir. I never killed anyone again, sir. You've got to believe me, sir. Uh, I actually would we like to hear from you is, sir, I'm, I'm what you would like to call part of the younger generation, sir. A person whose actions adults can't possibly comprehend. Please, Mr. Edgeworth, sir. Help me, sir. How was your meekins? Yes, sir. Give us your report of the crime, considering, consider that in order. Yes, sir, as you wish. After all, I'm part of the generation that must be told what to do, sir. Can't fault him for his lack of enthusiasm.
Coming for it, sir. Although it's not my normal duty, I, assign, I was assigned to guard the evidence room that day. I spotted the suspicious man on the security screen and rushed into the room. I was only doing what I was trained to do, sir. I was accidentally, or suddenly attacked. I fought for my life, then I, I did it. After that, I passed out, until another officer smacked me awake. Hmm. So the victim, Detective Goodman, attacked you. Do one to others before they do one to you. That's the Meekin's family motto, sir. I see, then. You fainted and a colleague helped you regain consciousness? Yes, sir. He knocks me upside my head, sir. Very well. The defense may begin cross-examination. A crass examination? What I need here is more info to work out with. Crime report, sir. Other than not my normal duty, I was assigned to guard evidence room that day. Mr. Meekins, you work in the General Affairs Department, do you not? Yes, sir. I'm in charge of hiring new recruits, sir. So that's a scary thought. Evidence transferal was taking place on the day of the crime, which means many officers were given special tasks and were ordinarily performed. I was in charge of guarding the blue badger, sir. The blue badger? Yes, sir. The lovely police mascot created by the head of the head detective, sir. Was unsure that it wasn't broken during the transferal process. That was my sole mission for the day, sir. I see. Sounds like a very uh, important mission. After that, the award ceremony finished that day. There were so many people running around that I required that we will carry the blue badger to the evidence room. Oh, so that's why you went to the evidence room. Tell us, what did you see when you got there? I spotted a suspicious man and a security screen man. Yeah. That's okay. Bullets! In order to enter the evidence room, you need the ID card, am I correct? Precisely, sir. I have one right here around my neck. So then, your ID number should be listed on your right. There it is. Uh, I found it. This is the this is the one right here. There, here. Could you please read this as a number? Yes, sir. It's four eight wait, four nine eight nine five nine six. That's my number, sir. I see. Huh. The number is four nine eight nine five nine six. It's shown being used twice. Please explain it, witness. That's no real mystery, sir. First time is when I relocated Blue Panther to the evidence room. And the second time is when I went down to get him after everything settled down. I see. So it was during that second time when... Yes, sir, that's when I spotted the man on the security screen. Okay, so we got... that's updated. I was the only one doing what I was trying to do, sir, to suddenly attack. So you were attacked, and you please tell us exactly tell us exactly what happened to you. It was a knife, sir. A knife. Detective Goodman pulled a knife on you? What happened then? Well, with my... With me charging in on him... Or charging in on him like that, he looked as surprised as I was. You weren't exactly the kind of person someone would want to run into. That's when I reacted, sir. I swung my arms like the octopus struggling to detain him. That's how I got this gash in my hand. Maybe if you just kept her cool and her hand wouldn't be so... When I saw the blood trickling down my arm, I panicked. I grabbed the man by the collar. I fought for my life and I, I did it. What exactly did you mean uh, when you say you did it? I don't know. I don't look the type, but I really am really into kung fu films, sir. The man let his guard down for just an instant, so I snatched a knife from him. He took his knife. 
I spun him around and deformed his arming maneuver. I made it look... I made sure to close my eyes like a man. I, uh, see. He must have been desperate. The next thing I knew, he was white... His white coat was drenched in the sea of my blood, and then... That the next thing I knew... Yes? He punched me right in my face, sir. After that, I passed out until another officer smacked me awake. By that time, did you regain consciousness? No offense, sir, but how am I supposed to know that I'm not... or I was unconscious? Alright. According to the report from the officer that woke you up, it would have been about 5.30. Hit me right in the head, too. I woke up crying tears of pain. That's nice. Uh, I mean, it's nice that you recovered, that is. When I came around, though, I made sure to finish my mission, sir. Your mission? Yes, sir. The blue badger, sir. I returned to the entrance before things got out of hand. Well, we can all rest easy now. Uh, we now have a fairly accurate picture of, uh, of what happened. Yes, Your Honor. Only one thing remains unclear. Was the man... The man the officer murdered really the, the victim? He's got a point. Um... Yes, Officer Meekins? With regards to that, sir... Take a look at, took a look at this. It was the sent to my cell. Chief Kank delivered it to me just the, this morning, sir. The chief? Delivered it? What, what is that? A uh, videotape? Yes, sir. That's absolutely right, sir. The videotape, sir. It contains footage of the security camera and the evidence room. Objection! What? But I specifically asked if there was such a tape. And it was told that had been mistakenly erased. That's quite a mistake. I just do what I'm told, sir. It's the only thing I'm really good at. Looks like the communications with the police department are as good as ever. Well then, let's have a look. Show us the video of you murdering the victim. Oh, please stop using that word murder, sir. It scares me. Video of the real murderer, just what I, uh, are we getting ourselves into? Dance, Woo Badger. Dance, Woo Badger, bit dance. show anything. Uh. 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 Well, I believe we're all thinking the same thing. How can we deal with these unsettling feelings stirring within us? What the hell was that wiggly piece of, of plywood? Sir, that was the pride of the joy of the entire criminal affairs department, sir. It's a blue badger, sir. Why am I not surprised this isn't going as smoothly? Security video added to this court record. Yes, well, anyway, this tape seems to prove that there was a witness that did indeed encounter er, someone. In the evidence room, and some sort of activity did take place. Your Honor, instead of relying on clearly incompetent footage, or incomplete footage, the witness's testimony will suffice. Is that all right with you, Officer Meekins? Yes, sir. As you wish, sir. Mystery bad. His face couldn't be clearly seen in the video, but there was no question that the other person was Detective Goodman, sir. I mean, he opened a locker which required Detective Goodman's fingerprints to do, so what do you do? The locker he opened unquestionably Detective Goodman's locker, sir. So it must have been him. No other could have unlocked it. This is about a fingerprint. Each detective has given a locker equipped with a fingerprint activated lock. These locks ensure that each locker can only be opened by a detective that they belong to. Intriguing. That would mean the victim at the crime scene would have been Detective Goodman. Very well. The defense may begin the cross-examination. 
I don't know where this cross-examination will lead. Uh, but everything begins with contradiction. That's where I have to start. Alright. The Sazer couldn't clearly be seen in the video, but there's no question that the other person detected Goodman's hurt. I mean, he opened the locker, which requires Detective Goodman's blueprints, er, the blueprints, fingerprints to do so. The locker is opened by, uh, unquestionably uh, Detective Goodman locker, sir. So it must be him and no other could unlock it. However, the most important detail is not shown in, in the video of the man's face. Sir! If, if I may say something, sir, please do. After all, you are the one being examined. I don't understand why the man's face is so important in the case, sir. I mean, it was his hand that opened the fingerprint lock. And it was his hand that tried to thrust the knife into my body, sir. My unsettled state can't testify enough of this, sir. Yes, you have a point. The footage doesn't lie. That is, unless the defense can find a problem with it. Mr. Wright, let's check the court record again. Do you see a problem with the security photo video? Yeah, there's definitely gotta be a problem. Regarding the video contained, uh, or regarding the video contained in the on the state, there's one thing in particular that seems rather strange. Strange? This contradiction leads to possibility that the man may not be Detective Goodman. What? This video contains such contradiction. Objection! Interesting, Your Honor. I have a proposal. Yes, Mr. Edgeworth? The proposal that we have that we have the defense point on to us with the alleged contradiction in the video. You would want me to point it out. He would want me to point it out. Very well, before the proposal accepted, let us farther inspect the piece of evidence. I will not play the security tape. Mr. Wright, please show us the contradiction of you speak of. I have to point out the problem in the video. This is the first time I've ever had to do that. You can do it, Mr. Wright. I'll set up so you can fast forward, rewind, pause the video. Just take a good look at the sure you point out the right thing. Please don't play it too many times. I can't stand watching the video. How did this guy ever become a police officer? Well now, Mr. Wright, please enlighten us. Where's the contradiction that indicates the man may... Uh, okay. It's on. Does it mean it's already been opened? Take that! The thing that's strange about this video has got to be this. The Officer Meekins. Sir, do you mean uh, me, sir? As you understand, if the locker operates, the operates works like this. When you grab the handle, the sensor reads the fingerprints. If the print matches the Registered data, the light turns on and the lock is released. According to my very limited experience, that's the way I understand it, sir. So if, if so, then something is seriously wrong with the picture. Yeah, the light's already on. for the handle, or the handle to open the locker, let's rewind a little bit earlier. Boop. Here, notice that light? What's this? It's already lit. Precisely my point, Your Honor. The locker is already open before the victim grabbed the handle. What's the meaning of this? It's very simple, Your Honor. The locker wasn't locked on the day that the crime. But the locker locks are controlled by an electronic system. When the door is shut, the sensor is triggered. 
and the locker is automatically locked. Okay. Oh, I know it. It must have been br uh, broken down. Of course, I'm not an expert in, in, these, in this. That's not likely, Your Honor. The sensor would detect the port any malfunctions. Oh well, it just uh, goes to show the novice should keep their mouth shut. So then, Mr. Wright, do you have an explanation? Be Your Honor? Yes. Why wasn't the locker locked? Be Your Honor? <laughs> Uh, yes, well, you see, this isn't exactly my field. What do you think, Miss Scientific Investigator? Huh? Oh, um, maybe something like jammed an electrical system? Something jammed an electrical system. Say, there's something else that seems out of place in this video. Yeah, I thought so too. There's got to be another clue somewhere in this footage. Well, right, let's inspect the video once more. The locker wasn't locked, Mr. Wright. Please point out the cause for this. Mom? Yeah, it's thing that fell out of the locker. Can I not? That thing, right there. Something that fell out of the locker. Take that! Please watch closely. This is the this is a continuation of the part I showed you earlier. What's this? Something white fell out of the locker. But sir, it's been my experience that things fall out of the when doors are open. It often falls out and roll great distances Objection! when I often something. You can't be sure that the item was in the locker to begin with. What do you mean? Sensor triggered the lock when the door is shut. What if something was inserted, say, between the sensor and the door? In inserted? Yes, Your Honor, inserted. Like I did with your mom last night. Ooh! This white thing wasn't inside the locker. It was stuck between the door and the sensor. Oh, I understand now, sir. It's just like my tie. Two out of three times it gets stuck in the door, and when I get out of at my patrol car, sir, instead of the door closing, my tie chokes me. <laughs> what? The object would have to be extremely thin to fit in a door. Not only that, it would also be to have to block, uh, block uh, electrical current. It would need to be an insulator. Yes, an insulator. But at a crime scene, there just might have been something that fits the description. But sir, by an insulator, you, you don't mean... I think I finally got this figured out. Very well. Will the defense please present the, the relevant, uh, relevant evidence. What was the insulator that was stuck in the locker door? An insulator? I hardly know her. Take that! I found this in the locker. It's a thin rubber glove. But we can't be sure that was in the victim's locker. And this tag that says SL9 incident. Huh? The video seems to depict the victim opening locker. That isn't the case that light, a lit lamp attested this. On the day of the crime, even I could have opened the locker. Is it not so, Mr. Officer Meekins? Sir. It would appear so, sir. Testimony to prove this. What? 
Officer Meekins, please testify about this. Sir, M me, sir? I'm not sure you're, you're, what you're referring, referring to, sir. Oh, you mean that, sir? Of course, sir. Is that just a joke? Very well, begin your testimony. Mystery man number two. There was one other person, one other thing that proves that the man was Detective Goodman, sir. To enter the evidence room, one must have their ID card. When an ID card is used, there is a record of it. At the time of the crime, the detective had used his card. ID card record record, I see. Uh, I have the ID record right here, Deep Bonner. The ID is at 514. Is that the victim? Just before the crime, huh? Well, without a doubt, this is the victim's ID. However, one thing does not strike me as unusual. Several hundred cases should have been due for transfer. Why were there so few people using that room? This particular evidence room is only used for storing certain special cases. Special cases? Show me violent cases involving police staff. This thing that makes me a hair stand on end. Me too, although it doesn't make much of a difference. There was only a few cases up for transferal there, and most of them were cleared by up by noon. Right. I see. Now let's move on to the cross-examination. Alright. Time to the reference room. Must have an ID card. When an ID card is used, there's a record of it. At the time of the crime, the detective had used his card. Wait one moment, Officer Meekins. I'm not good at waiting, sir. I have the victim's ID card here, right here. I found it at the crime scene. That makes sense. When I say crime scene, I'm not referring to the evidence room of the police department. I mean the other crime scene. The under underground parking lot at the uh, prosecutor's office. Your Honor, I have one more piece of evidence to present. It's a very important clue regarding the victim's ID card. A lost items report? It's only half completed, but it shows Detective Goodman had lost something on the day of the crime. Something important enough to fill out the, this report. Let me guess. You believe that something could be his ID card, right? I can't say for sure, but there is a high probability. On the day of the crime, Detective Goodman was not carrying his card. So now, what does this all mean? I can only mean one thing. It doesn't require much thought. The man Officer Meekins encountered in the evidence room was not Detective Goodman, but rather the man who stole his ID card. Order, order, order. Does this prosecution have a response? I have only one thing to say, and, and to my defense. Bravo, Mr. Wright. Bravo. Now let me just summarize the defense's argument. At 5.15 on the day of the crime, the man, the man Officer Meekins encountered in the evidence room was not a Detective Goodman. There are two grounds for the support this. First, the locker that, uh, in the evidence room was already unlocked. Second, the victim lost his ID card. Am I corrected so far, Mr. Wright? Yes, that's what was he up to? That's being the case, we must inevitably, inevitably arrive at a single conclusion. If the victim in the video is fake, then the murder of the evidence locker is also fake. In other words, the security camera does not show the instance of the murder. Um, that is... well, I guess that's right. Is something wrong, Mr. Wright? Only moments you go, you seem content of pointing out your finger around. This isn't good. Well, well, it seems like you finally realized exactly what you've gone to such lengths to prove. Explain yourself, Mr. Edgeworth. Yeah, worthy. Edgy boy. 
defense is already done explaining for me. The in the video is fake, which means the murder did not take place at the patrol or police department at 5.15 the day of the crime. So, so the real crime could only take place in one location, the underground, underground parking lot. Uh, the prosecutor's office, the murder being uh, Miss Lana Sky, the defendant. That was Miss Capelli. A trustworthy witness observed the moment of the defendant using the, the murder weapon. Arrgh! I knew that testimony was way too shabby. It was all a trap from the beginning. Act the activity in the evidence room was still leaves many questions unanswered. Who exactly was the victim Officer Meekin's encounter, and where did all the per the, uh, this person go disappear to? However, this trial's purpose is examining why only the murder of the detective Goadman. Just so, Your Honor. Mr. Wright, you have to do something, or else Lana... That's what I do. How am I supposed to get myself out of this? Objection! 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 One moment, Your Honor. But now, Mr. Wright? Don't tell me you're you're objecting to what you uh, what you've just proven. Of course not. But I almost walked right into your pres or prosecutor trap. What are you talking about? This cross examination has proven one thing and one thing only. The security video did not show the actual murder. We can watch this whole thing. Can we just go on? However, it cannot be said that the unrelated to the murder at the parking lot. Specifically, large amounts of blood trace were found in the evidence room. Huh? The defense demands further explanation into the truth of the matter. Mr. Edgeworth? Yes, Your Honor. If this court is were to examine this further, other witnesses will be necessary. The prosecution prepared. I'm sorry, Your Honor. The prosecution considered the incident at the police station to be unrelated. We have not prepared any other witnesses for the incident. This just might be my chance. Time to call in a certain Texas Ranger to the stand. Mr. Wright, do you mean... Your Honor? The defense would like to request a spe specific uh, witness. Oh, who do you have in mind? Some men have a reason to believe knows the truth. The truth behind the activities that took place that uh, enabled the room. The prosecution requests to hear the person's name before deciding whether or not to comply. But... Bro, I'm not very well, Mr. Wright. This person whom you have to have testify, what's his or her name? Walker, Texas Ranger. Jake Marshall. Officer Jake Marshall. Why him? I can't let him know everything just yet. He's in charge of the evidence room. I feel we should hear what he has to say. The prosecution agrees to the defense's request. Since we have no responsibility he was responsible for regarding the room, we should hear his testimony. Unfortunately, he works in the police department. We shouldn't need any longer than 20 minutes to prepare. Very well. This court will take a 30-minute recess uh, while the witness is subpoenaed. Will the prosecution please prepare the witness during this time? We will, Your Honor. Court is in recess. Now we're at uh, part two of the day three. So we're on day three. Uh, oh yeah, we're on part, part two, day three. Huh? What? There's no stopping you, is there, Mr. Wright? Huh? What do you mean? You call for Jake Marshall. It seems you've figured out everything, or figured everything out, huh? I haven't figured out anything. Man, you're the one who knows everything. Emma. You always know everything. Why don't you just tell us? Mr. Wright is trying his hardest to protect you. I... I don't recall ever asking for his protection. 
How can you be so cold? Don't you trust us? Don't you trust me? Huh. Hope we're not interrupting anything, pals. Oh, guess I am. I'll come back later. Uh, what's up, pals? Oh, Detective Gumshoe, what is it? You've got a lot of nerve, pal, making a detective run all around all on duty. And on top of it all, good off. You stop me here? You call me here. I've been happier people in funerals. I've seen happier people in funerals. Sorry, detective. You better be, pal. Hey, 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 hey. Didn't see you there, Miss Sky. That's okay, so have you brought me what I asked? Oh. <laughs> I mean, this right? My apologies, Detective. Due to my present circumstances, I was forced to use Mr. Wright's name when making my request. My name? Never in a million years, but I thought I was, it was you I was, who asked me. Did I bother you to bring in SL9 and some files? I need them for my new. Talk about crazy. That's all nine incident. Atlanta, that's... I thought Mr. Wright might need them, so I had them brought here. Here. You might do well to read them. I can't believe the chief prosecutor were a witness in that case. Mr. Smith's guy was a witness? <laughs> Take it from me, you don't want anything to do with the serial murders. Oh, what? Now that I've brought you this stuff, you're just gonna ignore me? Emma, but why? Why is your name in here? What? My name in here, in there? I don't know, unless... No, it couldn't be. Lana, that's all nine incident. Is that... That's the classification number for the police filed it under. Two years ago, the rest of the world knew it as... The Joe Drake killings. Joe, Joe Dark? Joe Dark, eh? Hey, it's a Joe Dark, eh? No, no, Lana. That's over with. No! I'm gonna wait. She ran away. Ah, you know what? I just remembered I gotta be somewhere. Sorry, Phil. Uh, but I'm, I'm out of here. Ooh. See, Phil. That's gonna be a voice for the next time I play this. Jake Marshall, Angel Star, Dame, Damon Gant, and Miles Edgeworth. Not to mention Lana and Emma. Everyone involved in this case is connected to those killings years ago. This can't be just a coincidence. Knowing you, you just might be able to figure out it out. Time to get back to the trial, Mr. Wright. That's the one. I might not be Mr. Wright, but I'm Mr. Wright now. I better, <laughs> I better take a good look at the file. To be continued. I guess I could add whatever. My wife needed help, so I did, I, whatever. Shut up. We're gonna save to this point. No, we're just gonna keep going. We're gonna we're gonna finish day three. So I think day three is this, is this just trial stuff? Yeah, we got we, we got a little bit more trial, and then we got an investigation, and then we'll be on to day four next video. <clears throat> Excuse me. Be convenient for the trial, Miss Lannisky. I mean, didn't come back. Allow me to call my next witness to the stand. The officer in charge of guarding Avenue's room on the day of the crime. What is he drinking? Witness, please state your name and occupation. Me, partner? Oh, I'm just a man, same as you, wander around the trails of civilization. Sections when needed. Oh, I know, you're the patrolman. That's my name. You listen hard enough, you can hear the hound wind calling it out. To be exact, it's Jake Marshall, with your honor. Howland wind? I've never heard Edgeworth describe that way before. Now, Mr. Marshall, let me ask you something. You were in charge of guarding the evidence room on the day the crime took place. Is that correct? According to the papers, pardon. What do you mean? The test by the soul is the balance of the desert sands. No paper can sum that up. Yeehaw, fuckers. Yippee-ki-yay, Mr. Falcon. 
Uh, maybe it's the best to get off with this quickly. Be sure with this testimony the day of the crime. In English. Day of the crime. My job is to keep the worry on the bone, bone archer. And they said I was supposed to make rounds three times a day, but that ain't, that ain't my style. Besides, the room's protected by two security systems anyway. If I remember right, I was at the street side saloon at the time it went down. I'm just an instant traveling man, so if you're out, if you're out of ammo, it's, it's time to hit the trail. I can't say uh, I particularly care for your attitude. Does, does he know, man? I don't care for your attitude, youngin! Back in my day! I can't, I can't say I care for your beard, but that don't mm, see me complaining. Wait a minute. What do you mean by two security systems? I mean, security, uh, the security camera is an ID card reader. I reckon even a cowpoke like you knows about those. Yes, well, what about the finger, fingerprint activator locks inside the evidence room? Fingerprint activator locks? What kind of newfangled doohickeys are those? It's not very helpful. <laughs> it's, that purple isn't very helpful either. It's not, it's not good with machines or with following orders. Everybody's got the weaknesses. Now don't they, Mr. Prosecutor? Uh, <laughs> this one seems like trouble. Okay, Mr. Wright, he's all yours. Day of the crime. <laughs> Stuck in that. <laughs> Sorry. Jaws, keep worry. I, uh, I don't know if I was okay. So we need to go to the where he's like saying he wasn't there. And we have like, if I remember right, I was the street side saloon presents. Uh, we can present his finger. There you go. Objection! Objection! Officer Marshall, doesn't it strike you as odd that that is. You're being called to testify like this? After all, you weren't in the security room at the time of the crime. And yet, you dragged me down here? Explain yourself, partner. It's quite simple. You left a very large, large trail behind at the scene. Or to be exact, a handprint. Oh, this isn't real good, partner. Like I said, I'm the caretaker of that crib. I pays me, I pays me respect. That is, that make me rounds about once a month. It's only natural my fingerprints would be in there. Objection! Only wish it were, officer. But you see, your fingerprints were covered in blood. Mm. Rubble, rubble, rubble. Witness, what's the meaning of this? If we have saved Peter Prince for the scene of crime! <laughs> but it was wiped away, however. The Luminol task clearly revealed this. Well, Officer Marshall. It seems, it seems to me there ain't no person in this room with a head on his shoulders. Huh? I think you have an explanation then, Officer Marshall. What about the blood stained fingerprints? Very well, you may gain her testimony about their fingerprints. Found the cream, the cream, the cream scene? The crime scene! They're actually the sign of the crime. At the sign of the cream! That sounds dirty. <laughs> Where were you? I, I was at the sign of the cream. Or is that whatever? I can't even say it now. Like I said, I was only natural for my fingerprints to be in the evidence room. One of them just happened to be at the same place as its bloodstained handprint. That murderer's touched the, the locker where me. Where me? Where my fingerprint be. What's that by chance? Bloodstained was the fingerprint were completely unrelated. Or didn't you know murderers were wearing gloves? See, I had nothing to do with it. How does he know they were wearing gloves? Um, the witness's explanation appears valid, although there's room for doubt. Life would be fun without any doubt, partner. The defense may not cross-examine the witness. This guy is hiding something, I could feel it. Now's my chance to prove it.
Been saying fingerprints. Like I said, it's only natural for my fingerprints to be at the evidence room. Uh, that's because you did, uh, how did you put it, pay your respects once a month? Yeah, that's about right. That and one more thing. That locker happens to be mine. What? What do you mean? I mean what I said. That locker is, uh, I use when I was a detective, and the locker is, is, I still use. It's all right there, and how, uh, it's, it's all right. It's all that's there and now. That was a heap of broken dreams. I see. It'd be strange for my prints if they weren't weren't all over the lacquer. Apparently his fingerprints data are, have never been changed. He must have been using the fingerprint lock without even knowing it. Marshal fingerprints updated the court record. None of them just happened to be in the same place as the blood stain with the amberant. A chance. The sands where the fingerprints were clearly unrelated. Or didn't you know the murderer was wearing gloves? How did he know? How do you know that? Well, I may be a loner, but I still don't do my job. I keep up with my reports. There was a blood stain at the scene with the route left by the murderer. That's right. <clears throat> I found uh, Detective Gumption's locker. However, no fingerprints were detected on, on that handprint. Oh yeah, I think they tried that too. Huh. So that would mean the murderer wearing gloves happened to place his hand on top of Marsh, Officer Marsh's handprint? That's the only logical conclusion? Are you starting to get the picture, partner? The picture? The seal of blood in the desert is his food for them buzzards. There's only one real reality, and that's this. Security tape. So long as my, my try isn't there, you can't say otherwise. I'm a trail. This isn't getting us anywhere, uh, Mr. Wright. Please consider carefully what you're going to do with this crime processing of nation. Yes, Your Honor. Now then, continue your testimony, Officer Marshall. Too bad it wasn't me. It was too bad it wasn't me in, in that video, Brian Partner. What do you mean by that? You want me to tie tie this up? Or you want me to tie this crime? Isn't that right, partner? You want to tie me to this crime? If so, that video is the only direct evidence you have. The video is next to useless. It's full of blind spots. Blind spots? Which you can't see. The camera is panning back and forth. The floor isn't shown. And someone is familiar with this camera's position. You can leave the room without being caught on tape. Objection! Uh, we don't have time for your speculations, Mr. Wright. Well, Mr. Wright. If you can show us evidence in, in the video, in, a vi in this video that, that indicates Officer Marshall was present, please do so now. Very well. Allow me to point out your mistake, Officer Marshall. Tread carefully, Mr. Wright, or you might wind up being one mis making the mistake. Now then, let's have another look at the video. Show us the incriminating evidence the, uh, of the witness, Officer Jake Marshall.
Take that! Bring your attention back to the security camera. It's a mistake you afraid that you'd soon not forget, Officer Marshall. Huh? The days are, sh the days are short in Texas, and so are our tempers. Could you sum up what you have to say in eight words or less? Very well. You can't clearly be seen in the video. Exactly eight words. Not bad, partner. The key has a certain locker shown in the video. See this locker that, that has a white claw sticking out? This is the witness's locker. Now then, let's rewind the video a bit. Cloth is, it's gone. But what's the meaning of this, Officer Marshall? When the crime took place, the white cloth wasn't there. Then it suddenly appeared. There's only one explanation. Officer Marshall, you were in the evidence room at the time of the crime. But some more, you opened your locker when the camera was turned off. Wait. Order, order. Uh, hold your horses. Sorry, partner. But you got me the wrong man. What if my locker was open? It doesn't mean I'm the one who opened it. Murderers needed to hide something, so we put the locker and shut it and stuck it in. It's not my fault you have to choose mine. Why is everybody staring at me like I'm one man? Because he doesn't under he doesn't know that this guy isn't just playing dumb. Why is my mouse keep like that? <laughs> he really doesn't know. Uh, I hate to rain on your parade, but you're the only person who can open that particular locker. Oh yeah? I call your bluff. You say open that locker, now prove it. Where's the picture of the locker thing? No, what's not? It got here. Oh, that's four plans. Oh, there it is. Take that! Take like that! Uh, a fingerprint sensor? about this earlier today. The lockers can only be opened by a detective who they belong to. What kind of crazy talk is this? Well, Detective Gumshoe did mention something about this. In any case, the locks aren't that obvious. They're even some people in force. We don't know about the fingerprint locks. So sure, what do you have to say? In eight words or less. I got one word for you, partner. No! Order, order, order. Witness, explain yourself. If this is a joke, it's the worst I've ever heard. I assure you this is no joke, Officer Marshall. Now then, please tell us what you were doing in the evidence room at the time of the crime. Oh, wait. Oh, hey? Please answer the question. Hey. What is he now, a bullfighter? That's all right, Officer Marshall. I believe you can figure that rest out from here. We can. Have a look at these floor plans. There's no place for uh, someone to hide in the evidence room. Yet Officer Meekins didn't see Officer Marshall. If that's so then, where was the witness? It's something Mr. Wright has an, has an answer. That's right. The only possible conclusion. Well then, let's hear it. Where was Officer Marshall at the time of the crime? Take that! Officer Marshall was standing right th here. There? But isn't that... That's where the victim, Detective Goodman, was. Correct, unless the man wasn't Detective Goodman. I believe the victim in this video is also Officer Marshall. It was you dressed up like Detective Goodman. That's preposterous. Officer Meekins witnessed the detective in the crime scene. Once he saw the man's face, he would have known for sure. May I point out the 
out, though, that Officer Miku did not know Detective Goodman. He also testified about how the man reacted to being confronted. When I entered the evidence room, I asked him to show his card, sir. Yes, and how did Detective Goodman respond? He suddenly pulled a knife on me. Something about that officer's story puzzled me. If the man had an ID card, why didn't he just show it? Yes, he would have indeed... Need, or he would have needed to enter the evidence room, so he must have been carrying it. The answer is simple. He couldn't show it. As you see, Detective Goodman's picture's on his ID card. Oh, I get it. If he showed that, the cover would have been blown. How sure Meekins would have realized the man wasn't Detective Goodman. Do you have anything to say about this? Say to this, Officer Marshall? You've got, you got quite an imagination, partner. <laughs> we got a term for that. It's called circumstantial evidence. Circumstantial evidence? He's still denying it. You're gonna have to do better than that and break a detective. Unless you have hard evidence proving I dress up as the victim. I can't say I particularly care for your uncooperative disposition. But I can say I care for your... I can't say I care for your beard, but you don't see me complaining. Well, Mr. Wright, do you have any evidence? Any evidence proving beyond a shadow of a doubt that Officer Marshall dressed up as the victim? Well, who am I kidding? I don't have anything like that. I can see the fear in your eye, your eyes, partner. It seems like you're the one who just couldn't take the desert heat. Heck! Heck! This can't be happening. It's so obvious he's the one. What can I do? Humph. Is Edgeworth gonna help me again? It looks like your lack of experience has finally been exposed. I'll pass on to you what someone told me when I was just starting out. When you run into a wall with no place to return, go return to basics. The basics? For me, that would be what my, Mia said, uh, used to tell me. Nick, try thinking outside the box. I shouldn't look for proof of Officer Marshall was in the disguise, but rather I should look for evidence that came about because he was wearing a disguise. Why do you think this locker was open in the first place? What do you mean? There's no reason for Officer Marshall to open the locker at the, at the time of the crime. Yet he did, despite the chance he might be discovered later. Which means he didn't originally, or originally plan to open the locker. According to the defense's argument, Officer Jake Marshall dressed as Detective Goodman at the time of the crime. Then after the crime was committed, he opened his own locker for some unknown reason. The fact that the white cloth is sticking out of the locker seems to indicate that he opened it in order to put it, the cloth inside. So, just what exactly is this piece of cloth? This guy is? Perhaps. Is this game I like, holding my hand a little bit? Perhaps the, the video of this key is unanswered. I don't have any evidence, so the video is my only shot. Oh, -ho. Well, let's take a, yeah, another look at the security tape. After committing the crime, the witness opened the locker to put the, away the white cloth. Please show us why the witness had to open the locker. Disguise yourself as Detective Goodman. And in terms of the evidence room, I don't know what the reason was yet. Yet. However, something unexpected happened. Officer Meekins barged in on you. When asked to show your ID, your ID, you pulled a knife on him. However, Officer Meekins panicked. Now, white, the white coat you were wearing, it was full of the blood. A bloody white coat. I couldn't just walk out like that. So you hit the coat in your locker. Not bad, huh, partner? He's not even denying it. Oh, -ho. 
Not an officer marshal. Are you ready to tell us the truth? Looks like I underestimated you all. I hope you're happy now, Mr. Edgeworth. Huh? Two years ago, if you were only half as persistent then as you are today, we all wouldn't have to be here now, would we? Officer Marshall, tell the court what you did, all of it. All right, it seems the time has come. Marshall's confession. I had to do it for that day. I couldn't just stand by and let it die. I saw the detective's ID and dress like him. I plan to take out the evidence. I was expecting Officer Beacons. I knocked him out. The magic escape. I knew what, which areas wouldn't be caught on the camera. There wasn't any murder in the evidence room at 515. That supposed victim was really you. There's only one thing I still don't understand. Large quantities of blood traces were found on the floor of the evidence room. If no one was murdered, then how could that be? Officer Meekins managed to cut his own hand. My guess is that he's the donor. It looks like a, so, too much blood for that. Marshall's confession. Alright. Had to do with the day I couldn't uh, just stand by and let it die. Oh, what exactly? When you say it, you mean. Do you even have to ask, partner? That's all I asked him. Two years have passed since that case was closed. It was going to be complete end of the transfer of that day. Not if I have anything to do with it. That is, it's not over. What did you hope to accomplish by sneaking in the evidence room? The case is closed, only the detective who was in the charge can look through the evidence. I wanted to have a look at myself one more time, no matter what the cost. I don't care what anyone says, partner, the case is mine. If Officer Marshall wasn't in charge of the investigation, why does he care so much about it? That day is the last chance that, that's why I... I saw the detective's badge, or ID, and dresses him. I plan on taking me out the evidence. Oh. Why did you describe yourself as a sect of good men? If I didn't make it look like good men was carrying out the evidence transfer, I'd be arrested for stealing evidence, which wouldn't get me anywhere. So you did it to fool the security camera? The detective's ID card? I saw that the morning of the incident. So that really was why Goodman started filling out uh, his lost item report? I returned his ID card. I left it on his floor of the prosecutor's parking lot. The ID card I found was left there by Officer Marshall. Essentially, you managed to successfully succeed despite your lack of foresight. What do you mean, partner? When your fingerprints activate the lock, of course, no matter how well you disguise yourself, you can't change your fingerprints. Normally the locker shouldn't have opened. So it opened because a rubber glove was stuck in a door by chance. Then Detective... Then Detective Goodman must have opened the locker before Officer Marshall. With expecting Officer Meekins, I knocked him out. <coughs> Pulled a knife out of Officer Meekins and tried to drive him off. Just to say I had a little surprise. I was only planning on being in the evidence room for more than five minutes. I didn't think anyone would actually come in during that short time. Officer Meekins certainly is one in a million type of person. Singing a detective for an intruder, demanding to show his ID. I have to think a little more about the raise this year. When did Edgeworth get such, get so, uh, so much influence? Anyways, he threw himself at me and I ended up cutting him slightly. I'm sorry I had to turn out that way. With me knocking him out and everything. By the way, what happened to the, your knife? What do you mean, this one? I don't know what to say. Huh. So what happened next? Imagine escape, but I know I knew which areas wouldn't be caught on the camera. So you did your research beforehand. Don't live long, partner. <laughs> I 
didn't think it would make a difference though, the security tape was erased every 6 hours. If it had not gone as planned, no footage would have been, uh, been left. However, when you bloodied your coat, uh, when you bloodied your coat in your struggle with Officer Meekins, if somebody was in the security room when I came out, the jig would have been up. I opened my locker and stashed it in there. That was Officer Meekins doing during that time. What else? He was sleeping like a baby. So what you're saying on that day, there wasn't any mortar in the evidence room at 5.15. What found at the uh, scene certainly indicates the crime took place. What are you blind? The victim showed shown on that tape was me, and I'm not dead yet, partner. So you stole the evidence from the locker. Actually, no, I didn't. Why not? When I opened the locker, the evidence was already gone. Wait, Mr. Edges, where's this evidence? It's still missing, Your Honor. Check the Goodman lock was already empty. Someone else stole the evidence. Officer Marshall, may I ask you one thing? By the way, partner, it's a free country. Just remember, I'm also free to decide whether or not to answer. Why did you do this? Selling a detective's ID and injuring a police officer? This is no small offense. Moreover, you're an officer yourself. There's a lot of serious consequences. You can't just forgive, be forgiven for a simple cut in salary. Not that sorry cuts are ever a valid solution. Like I said, this isn't your case. This one's mine. I'll do anything it takes to get the answers I'm satisfied with. Hmm. The witness is, has an unusual amount of zeal. Let's hear more. I can't uh, just forget that style incident. You know why. <coughs> The case was solved two years ago, wasn't it? That's the reason the evidence was stored in the evidence room. Joe Dark was convinced of his crimes. One thing I can say for sure is he deserves a sentence. I remember the Joe Dark case. It involves her serial murders, did it? Didn't it? I didn't intend to complain about it and how it turned out. But there's something that still bothers me. Something went, went down at the trial. Someone that, some, something no one will talk about. Talk about what happened. I don't know, that's what I'm trying to find out. Huh? Why is he so concerned with the incident? It's may maybe I should present him with what I think the real reason is. I have a feeling that we'd wind up here sooner or later. Everyone involved here is related in some ways that in that case. I better take another look at the files. Officer Marshall, I think I understand. I think I know why you care so much about that L9 incident. Sounds like you've been slip sipping too much cactus juice, partner. I have the S9 incident file here. The name Marshall is mentioned in here. And a list of murder victims. Neil Marshall, are you related to this man? Neil Marshall? Yeah, I'm sure you've heard my the name. Two years ago... He received the same lousy prosecutor award you got. What? A prosecutor? You must have been, ta been talking about the King of Prosecutor Award. I remember. Prosecutor Neil Marshall. He had the SL9 case before he, he, I did. That's right. He was killed. And the case fell into your hands. But that's his... Uh, what's his relation to you? 
He was my brother. He was investigating, investigating a murder with Damien Gant, chief detective at the time. A group of detectives I was part of worked under them. We were just desperate to prosecute the killer. Joe Dark, my brother fought Dark and was killed. That was the first time Dark left behind any evidence. That was all we needed. Uh, he was harangued and incarcerated. The case was finally closed. No, he's according to the public records. What do you mean? My brother couldn't have been killed by Joe Dark. I knew my brother better than anyone. No one could have beaten him in a fight. And that's it? That's your reason for insane actions? The door to my brother's death and the records say. Now how much you try to hide it, you can't fool me. Huh? Well, at least one thing's for certain. Now we know what happened to the police department on the day of the crime. That was the last day the SIL-9 case could be reopened. Not satisfied with the res uh, rest of the resolution, Officer Marshall planned to steal the evidence. Disguising himself as Detective Gumshoe, or Goodman, I'm sorry, he entered the evidence room. Officer Regans confronted him, so he rendered him unconscious and fled. Yes, this mysterious the mystery has been cleared up. No wonder it took place at the police department that day. Huh. The things that happened by chance never cease to amaze. Exactly the same time in the murder of the prosecutor's office, this fake murder was going on in the police department. Chaps. It's kind of more than just that. So no one knows, uh, no one was murdered at the police department on the day of the crime. That means the murder in the prosecutor's office parking lot was the real one. Which in turn means only one person can have committed the crime. Chief Prosecutor Lana Skye. Objection! But wait, the verdict hasn't reached in yesterday's crime. Objection. Which is why we examined the incident at the police department today. Oh, wait. There's only one reason the defendant was not convicted yesterday. But yet, uh, remain the mystery of the simultaneous murder at the police department. It seems to me this boy's got uh, the draw on you, partner. All the mysteries of the police department have been uncovered, no contradictions. But not contradictions remain. The murder took place in the prosecutor's office, the only suspect is Lance Sky. There was no errors in the testimony of the witness, Angel Star. If you have a response, uh, make it one word or less. Ah. I rest my case. Since the trial has reached a conclusion, there is no room for doubt. Well done, Mr. Wright. Thanks to you, I couldn't need to waste my time. Just proving the alleged murder at the police department. There's no doubt that I was proved, uh, proved today is true. The apparent murder on the security camera tape really was fake. But I don't realize, what I didn't realize, that would end up proving I'm guilty. Now then, the time for the verdict has arrived. This court finds the defendant. Your Honor, wait. Emma. Defense has an objection, uh, a scientific objection, right? What do you mean, right? Mr. Wright? Are you the girl's guardian? Your Honor. Oh, uh, in, in a sense. Please, Your Honor. All I'm asking is a minute of your time. Please hear me out. Mr. Redworth, please. I don't want to leave any loose ends. You want a minute? I'll give you three. I, I was kind of in shock. I mean, finding out the SL9 incident referred to the Joe Dark killings. Now that she mentions it... 
name of the ghost guy, Sky Sister, was in that file. That's when I figured it out. I mean, what officer Marshall was trying to do that day? So I knew his fingerprint had nothing to do with the crime. That left only one thing, the other handprint. That means that you mean the traces of blood found in Detective Gumshoe's locker? But no fingerprints were found on it, right? No, but I figured it, examined it scientifically, and we tried to find a clue. So I ran over there and looked at it again. <coughs> so did you find something? Um, no. Huh? Sorry, I guess I'm not much of a scientific investigator after all. Um, is that all? Please don't be mad, I'm just a uh, high school student. And I'm just an attorney. But Mr. Wright, those traces of blood were the only clue we have. We can't find something wrong with them. Please, Mr. Wright, you're a professional. If only I can save one, it's you. Me? <coughs> oh boy. <coughs> Time's up now. Uh, now then, Mr. Wright. With regard to the incident in the police department, there's any reasonable doubt in me. Um, Here's the defense is troubled by the other blood mark. Looking at the floor plan, the handprint was discovered around here. Is, it, is there a problem with this? It's right. I'm sorry, it can't be more use. But still, if you can't find anything wrong with the blood, uh, blood mark, the line will be. Please answer the question, Mr. Wright. We don't have all day. Yes, Your Honor. If I never needed uh, the concentrate, it's now. What could be wrong with the handprint in Detective Gumshoe's locker? Could there have been something uh, I'm missing. I object. Objection. The handprint left under the crime scene clearly shows a contradiction. <clears throat> the one thing that seems clear is that you're grasping, Mr. Wright. You've been staring pretty intensely at the floor plans. Tell me, is there a problem with them? Yes, uh, this is strange. Take a good look at these floor plans. Something is missing. Missing? You mean something hasn't been drawn down there? Yeah, something uh, that... Something that went drawn completely changed the meaning of this blood mark. Let's play the defenses and simply trying to buy time. Very well, Mr. Wright. With all the evidence here, this has got to be something I can use. The question is, which item can prove that something is missing from the floor plan? Stupid hey, badger isn't on there. What about the piece of plywood? The blue badger? Masked guy of the police force? Defendant, defender of truth, guardian of proof? Explain yourself, Mr. Wright. Please look at the floor plans of the same crime scene. The blue badger is not here. So? So watch what happens when you put him in. This is where he was dancing at the time of the crime. Well? Well, what? Gasp! <gasps> That's right! So, uh, so long as the blue badger is dancing around, it would be impossible to place a handprint at the time uh, at this spot in the locker. <coughs> what? That means, uh, just exactly what does that mean? It means it can be done. What are you saying? Blood traces were undeniably found in the locker. Look at me, I didn't put the put it there. Mr. Wright, I think it through scientifically. Emma. When that a on that afternoon, Officer Meekins was the only was the one who brought the badger to the evidence room, right? If you put it down, it would have been possible to leave the handprint in the locker. So that must mean this blood mark was left here before the blue badger was brought in. This one moment, I uh, will not allow such far-fetched other dash in my courtroom. You may say I'm far-fetched, but your honor, but it's the only possible expl explanation. It's February 21st, and, and the police department's evidence room. Blood was spilled not once, but twice. But how? <coughs> One time was a capture of this thumb's tape by taking by the security camera. I was reading to cut his hand when he was a triple amount of blood fell. The problem is, the other time. So 
definitely wasn't part of the struggle showing on the tape. It had, it had to have been. Detective Gumshoot when he was there, or the guy Goodman, who was when he was really murdered. Objection. That's ridiculous. I'm furious. We're portrayed in a security tape has been proven to be a fake. However, this does not explain the blood mark found at the locker. Objection. So then, assuming this murder uh, you report really happened. When did it take place? I demand you show evidence that proves that it occurred. When did the first incident occur? The surprise defense claims that prior to Officer Meekins being cut by Jake Marshall, who was also discussed as a detective, could have been another incident to place in the evidence room. What mark in the locker proves this? Very well, tell us that. Tell us, when did the first incident occur? Proof that it must be presented. But this shows when the murder took place. There's only one piece of evidence that can show that. Now then, what is the evidence please present in your evidence? And <coughs> which okay, it's me the If the crime took place inside the evidence locker or evidence room, then the perpetrator would have to have entered the room. In order to do so, the ID card is required. ID card? Oh! ID card record. Officer Meekins brought the blue badger panel into the evidence room at, let's see here, uh, 540. If the crime took place before that time, then it would be 440. Ah! Ah! Miles Edgeworth! Just what have you done? I never figured you had a nerve, boy. Put off that, put off that act, witness. It doesn't take a lot of thought to figure out it couldn't have been me. Huh? Nope, I'm not getting it. I'm afraid I don't understand either. It's clear from that luminol test the blood was there. Was there. However, when the second crime took place, both Officer Meekins and Officer Marshall failed to notice the blood. That means the blood from the first crime was wiped away. <clears throat> by the real murderer. Would have had just ten minutes to murder the victim carry his, and carry his body away to clean up the blood. And, uh, unfortunately, that's physically impossible. And that would mean the crime must have taken place before Mr. Edgeworth entered the evidence room. Let's look at the chart again. There's only one card number remaining 77777777. Talk about a lucky number. But wait, that doesn't make sense. How could Officer Goodman have entered the evidence room? Since there's no record of his card being used beforehand, he must have entered along with the real murderer. That's the only possible explanation. He went in with 7777777. Mr. Edgeworth, please look at this at ASMP. Find out who number it is. Uh, 7. That's one seven too many, Your Honor. Unfortunately, I'm able to look that up though in her ID card. At least at the present. What? Explain yourself, son. The ID number belongs to someone with the rank of captain or higher. Someone who's so-called eff efficiency officer. You don't have an authority to inquire into such a person in that person's event. That's ridiculous, just how. I'm not finished talking, Mr. Wright. There's one si uh, si situation which can be granted such authority. An official charge filed against the exec executive is accepted. An official charge? You're all alike, aren't you? With the, uh, your cover ups and your forgeries. That's how the prosecutor officer operates. Take pride in my work, Officer Marshall. I would appreciate it if you would keep your slander yourself. Slander, is it? Okay. Let me ask you a question. Yes? No, not you. To her, the defendant, defendant sitting over there. Your own little executive. Anna? Don't be stupid. She's been charged with the murder. Of course we're looking at her ID number. It's not 7777. 
Don't play me for a fool, partner. <clears throat> That's not what I meant to ask. All I want to know is one thing about the incident. That's all. L L79 incident? Answer me this one, Chief Prosecutor. In that trial two years ago, did you really only have use legitimate evidence? Do you need the witness to repeat the question, Chief Prosecutor? I heard him fine, Mr. Edgeworth. Two years ago, I was in charge of the prosecution for the trial. At the time, we... Occasionally, we felt the powerlessness of the law. At least, I did. Lana. I became a prosecutor in order to uh, suppress crime with the, the law. But before I realized it, we were the ones being suppressed by the law. Defendant, just what are you saying? I ask you again, Chief Prosecutor, darling. During the trial two years ago, did you really present all the evidence in court? Can you look me in an investigator in that crime in the eye and say yeah, you did? Chief Prosecutor, you didn't. I don't have to, Officer Marshall. Why didn't you answer him? Drastic crime requires drastic measures, and that's just the way it, it is. We do what we had to, in order for him to get the verdict he deserved. Alana, even if it involved forging evidence. Wow, everybody's seriously surprised. See, that's the what I'm talking about. No! No! Order, 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 order! Lana's remarks would cause such a stir. Chaos in the courtroom could not be quelled. Conclusion of the trial. We'd have to wait until the following day. I have to stop. I'm playing for like an hour, almost two hours. I was hoping to like get get all th th day three done, but there's still a lot to do. Yeah, there's still a lot more to do. I might, I don't know, I might just have to see if I can finish this next time. I wanted to do all of day three, but I don't think I can. It's too much to do. Alright, let's see my game here. We'll pick this up next time. Hopefully, depending on how long it takes, I might finish. I'm hoping to finish it. Alright, you guys. <coughs> Sorry, I'm starting to lose my voice. Um, so this has been Phoenix Wright, uh, Ace Attorney. We're on the last trial. Uh, we're almost done. I, I maybe we'll have one more, one, one more video. I don't know. I, <coughs> it doesn't seem like there's much more left, but I just, I just can't, I can't keep going. It's been almost two hours, and my voice is starting to go out. Um, <coughs> so I'll see you guys when I see you. Until then, be excellent to each other. Be excellent to yourselves. Take care. Mental health, physical health, other good jazz. Um, keep your stick on the ice, and I'll see you guys in the next one.